Hello YouTube, it is Chris here and in today's episode we're going to be discussing what's in my $5,000 bug out bag. Welcome back everybody and thank you for sticking with me. Like I said, today we're gonna to be discussing what's in my $5,000 bug out bag. If you're joining us for the first time, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our new episodes or our daily giveaways. And make sure you smash that notification button so you don't miss anything. Also, we have a new round of our Amazon gift card giveaways. To enter, you must be a subscriber, leave a comment, and share this video using the YouTube tools in the watch page below. We also pick winners in the very next episode, so if you enter on this particular giveaway, you'll find out who the winner is on the very next episode. And one quick announcement before we get started is we just kicked off our very first day of our No Days Off shirt. It's designed by yours truly and the awesome artist over at Bonfire to help make that thing a reality. But if you want to go pick yours up, this sale is going to be running for 15 days only. And once they're gone, they are gone. This is a limited edition shirt. If you want to pick up yours and support our channel, link will be in the video description. For those of you who follow our channel regularly, you know we love building survival bags, survival kits, and just experimenting with different loadouts. And understandably, we understand that not everyone's going to be running the same rig. The things you're going to see in this bug out bag are just going to be showcasing what we chose to put in our bug out bag. And hopefully it just opens up your brain and gives you some ideas of things and some food for thought for things that you could possibly work into your system. This is the Muskeg from Kafaro. This is their 5,000 cubic inch or basically 81.9 liter pack. Now there is an admin pouch here and on the waist straps of this particular pack. Also, we're running the duplex light frame. If you want to know more information about this pack, definitely go check out the link in the video description, which is kafaro.net. Now, as this is a bug out bag, there are, is a strap right here and one at the top. So if you have this in your house and it's loaded up, you can just pick this thing up, grab and go, and slam it into your vehicle and you're ready to go. But why we pick this pack over any other backpack is because it's water resistant naturally. Uh, the actual fibers and the nylon this is made of is naturally water resistant with waterproof zippers running along the side so I can actually access the meat potatoes on my pack without actually having to go through the top loader if I don't want to. But we have a pouch right here that's not completely useless actually, but I actually am keeping freeze dried food in here. And recommended, I would tell people the first day or so, don't eat, do not eat food. Just because this is a 21 day bug out bag, I wanted to make sure that I have some meals to kind of supplement if I'm in an area where there's not a lot of game or maybe I'm still in an urban environment, but you definitely want to make sure you have something to kind of keep your energy up and keep you going. So on the front straps or the yokes, we have the Kogala Raw Trail Lights. You guys, a lot of people are asking about it in the $50 versus $5,000 bug out bag. Like, what's those trail lights? These things are super, super freaking bright. Uh, we tested these on the trail in the middle of the backwoods. These things light up everything. You want to light up a scene, a campsite, an area, these lights will definitely do the trick. The top admin pouch is what actually carries the external batteries of the particular Kogala lights. This is what powers it and makes it all happen. Now in this particular strap on my waistband, I actually have my Barska 10 by 42 binoculars so I can see off into the distance. On the other side of my waistband strap, we have another pouch. This is my jacket from Uncharted Supply. This is a windproof jacket, but it's also waterproof. So if it starts raining on me, very similar to a poncho essentially. However, this poncho is a little bit nicer because of the fact that I can actually stuff it full of leaves, trash, whatever I need to, and actually insulate myself and use it as a bed, ground cover, or a blanket insulation if I need to. Then we have my Linsatic compass from Kaminga. This is a military grade compass. This is like a $70.80 compass. Then we've got this little guy right here. This is from Fiberlight. This is pretty freaking cool. This is just if I need to start a fire in an emergency, I don't want to dig through my whole pack. I've got a little something right here. Additionally, if for whatever reason I lose my whistle that's on my yoke, I have an emergency whistle right here. I can flag down some help. And on the inside of this bad boy, this is actual fire striker to strike a fire. And last but not least, if, if, because I'm in Texas, if I get into a more humid area or I get near some water, I definitely have some bug spray so I can keep myself flea and tick and bug resistant. So as you guys know, we have a water bladder on the Kafaro pack that is holds three liters of water. Because we all live in a semi-desert environment, water is absolutely key. So being able to stay hydrated is just absolutely paramount. I wanted to make sure I had some virus protection. So this is the Frontier Redlined Virus Filter Straw. 
You yeah, actually guys saw this in the survival boxes episode that we just did. And this particular system will filter out viruses. Now you're only getting 120 gallon capacity, but while you're on the move, this thing will be more, like more than enough to see you through inside the pouch, which we're gonna be providing some overlay footage as well. This is my tripwire kit from Fifth Ops. I have five of the 208 primer tripwire alarms, and we have a bunch of Kevlar thread here. I think I have like three or 400 feet, and then a hundred of the 209 shell shotgun primers with all the little cotter pins and all the little things that I need to connect it. And last but not least, this is my trail knife this is my survival knife this comes from kc knives up in canada we're definitely going to be dropping a link in the video description but this system is actually designed to be worn up and down vertically on your chest rig it's a very 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 comfortable system but this is a big old beefy knife this is rocking z wear it's rocking 2.78 inches very very sharp spine it has eight and a half percent corrosion resistance even though it is a carbon steel it's going to last a very very long time and this thing is a beefy 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 dude now, given the fact that it's so freaking big and pretty much almost a full flat grind, it actually comes in with the sheath rig at about a pound and a half. So it's gonna be very, very, very durable. It's gonna be nice and big. So now that we've gone through all of the nuggets of everything that's on the in, on, and around this pack, we're gonna dive into the meat of this kit and show you what's inside. Here it is. This is the meat and potatoes of what's inside my bug out bag. We've got my bug out roll, which you guys have seen. There are some changes. When it comes to my shelter, I've got to have a beautiful marriage between weight and durability. So we have the Apex Camping Shelter. This is a huge freaking 12 by nine tarp with all the grommet homes, all in the fixins. You guys have seen this in a bunch of videos. We have my Go Outfitters Camping Hammock. I can set this thing up. It's got a bug net built in, so I'm not just being eaten alive by bugs the whole freaking time. Then we have the Adventure Pillow, just so I have a tiny little creature comfort. And then last but not least, I have my trauma kit that I got from Packs USA. You guys saw that I'm at PrepperCon, and we're actually gonna be diving in just a little bit deeper into the contents of the kit. This is kind of like the, oh crap, I'm bleeding pouch. Uh, we have a Cat5 Turner kit. I like it's bright and orange. I mean, these are really easy to use. I mean, even if you just keep one in your glove box, keep it and learn how to use it. Uh, we have a rolled up gauze so I can put a little bit more pressure on a wound if I need to. We have a compression crinkle gauze right here that is on this pouch. And then we have a clotting sponge for any serious bleeding injuries. We need to stop quick, fast, and in a hurry. And then last but certainly not least is my bug out roll. This is kind of the heart of the entire operation. So in this first spot, we have some mosquito and bug repellent in here. This is 40% deep. This is nice and strong for the Texas backwoods. Then right here, we have some waterproof containers for toilet paper tablets. This will allow us to wash our face, wipe our bums out in the wilderness because carrying a roll of toilet paper, even though it does work, it's a little bit bulky. And then last but not least, we have an ultra sill bucket from Sea to Summit. This will allow us to hold two gallons of water in this little guy right here. In the next pouch, we have my Inmarit camp towel. This is my towel. This is it. This is all I get. Next, we have this field repair kit. This is for things like your shoes, your backpack, your sleeping bag, an air mattress, whatever you happen to have in your pack. Repair kits, repair tools are an often overlooked item. When you're out in the wilderness, you can't go to Academy, you can't go to REI, you can't go to Dick Shields, anywhere like that and go buy a new one. Then because fire redundancy is key, we have some Yuko Stormproof matches. I think we have 50 matches in here. And then something you're gonna see later, we have some quarter ball steel ball ammo for a slingshot. And in the last top pouch, we've got a carpenter pencil sharpener. We can use this to sharpen shavings for a fire. Additionally, if I find a stick that's big enough and we can divide it into four sections, create like a fishing spear, instead of using my knife and spending too much time, I can get perfectly symmetrical spikes with this if I need to for some spear fishing. And we've got two little vials of super glue right here. To an emergency, I also have a cat tourniquet right here. And then last but not least, we have the Hydrapack Seeker two liter bottle. Now onto the second row, we actually have these two bigger panels right here. Instead of having three, we've got two larger panels for bigger compartments. We have three of the shit kits. There's a field toiletry kit. We love these things. We bring them with us everywhere. Even when we go on road trips to places like Peppercon, we still have these with us. For on the go, we can't take a shower. We have ability to get some of the funk and the nastiness off of these big, huge freaking wipes. These things are the size 
of a towel. Solar Emergency Space Blanket. This is a rapid deployment opening. This is designed to open very, very quickly. Instead of fumbling around with the older style of Mercy Blankets, this thing will unfold in like 10 seconds. And then last but not least, we have my refill ferrocerium rods for my Lightning Strike ferro rod that you're gonna see here in a moment. On the next pouch, we have three of the six inch Kim lights. These will last like 10 to 12 hours. These are really, really good for signaling emergency low light. Then in case my stove breaks, I have these little tiny mini meatloaf pans. We got a five pack of these for like 88 cents. And I keep these so I can boil water and cook food. If anything happens on my cookware, I can keep these off to the side and have something to use on the fly. Then we have my H2R Nova headlamp. This thing is super, super bright, super durable. I chose this one because it's the toughest headlamp we found to date. This thing is absolutely amazing. Actual charger that will go with my external battery for this so I can keep this going on the fly. Now, something we're gonna be trading out, this is a polymer pot lifter. So for my camp stove and some things that you're gonna see here in a moment. But we actually ran into a situation where we had a little bit of a meltdown on this thing. Now this thing, we've had this for like a year and a half. It did a really, really good job. It handled the heat really, really well. But we think we're gonna be changing into some titanium ones. And then it comes down to cordage. We have the rip spool tool by Exotac. This gives you basically duct tape, some braided line. And then in here we have a sewing needle right in here. So this is also a part of field repair kits as well. And then we have the mini spool tool by Atwood. This thing is freaking amazing. This gives me 125 feet of 100 pound utility cordage with a razor wire in here so I can cut this to measurement and have cordage on the fly and keep this with me without taking up a lot of space. Now we move on to the next row. This is kind of my just in case pack. So let's say I've set up my base camp and I'm gonna go on a hunting, we're gonna go fishing, I'm gonna be walking away from the base camp. Even with trip wires that can alert me and if anybody comes near, if someone steals my pack or marauders take all my stuff or my camp gets destroyed by a wild animal, I wanna make sure I have something with me. So this is something I can keep in my cargo pocket. I have an ability to start a fire, some utility cords, a water filter, fire starting, a compass. If the fecal matter hits the vertical oscillator while in the SHTF situation, I wanna make sure I have kind of a small little backup. Having a pre-manufactured backup just works. And then the next pouch, we have an emergency blanket, nothing to really speak of there. This is the Backcountry Kit Ultralight. This just gives me some algae boo-boos and a couple little extras that I can stick in my pocket. And then I have kind of my meat and potatoes in my field repair kit. I have a sewing kit, this will help me with my hammock and my clothing, buttons, things like that. We also have some tenacious tape in here, because like I said, if you don't have a way to maintain your equipment, your clothing, your gear while you're out in the field, because you can't go to the store and go to Amazon and go buy more. We have two days worth of emergency food rations. Additionally, we have some wax wood sticks by Production Hanger 51. Now, these are completely impervious to elements. I have dunked these in water, done everything I can to destroy these, and these things light up like a Christmas tree and do a very, very good job of getting a fire started for me. Then moving on, we have my Outdoor Extreme Energy 16,000 milliamp battery. This also has a solar panel on it, so I can actually use the sun to recharge this thing. This is the, the tube light. This uses strontium aluminate. This gets charged by the sun and is a forever reusable glow stick. These last 10 to 12 hours after they've been charged as little as five minutes then we have my hydro blue sidekick the pin filter we also have some replacement carbonate filters on here and then moving forward we have fire starting king of kings this is the lightning strike fire starter and in an emergency fire is key and with already being in a stressed out situation the ability to be able to start a fire reliably almost every single time is just awesome but not least this is my spark and sharp this also has a ferro rod on it and some little fire tinder but i mostly use this to keep my tools sharp in the field this will allow me to do serrations my saws the axe and my knife at the same time with minimal space and effort now we move on to the two lower panels in the top panel this is my fishing kit this is all i get i have some extra floats i have some baits then we have my little mini tackle box right here that's got all the hooks and all the little bobbers and everything and swivels and everything I might need. Instead of bringing a fishing pole, I decided on the Kabuya Handline by my buddy, my Kyle. He's the creator of the Emberlet Stove, which is another invention of his that we have in this bug out bag. I've got it all pre-rigged out, so all I gotta do is put a bait on it and literally start fishing right here. And then in case my stuff breaks, I have the P-Line Florida Clear 15 pound test. This is 300 yards of this bad boy. The next pouch, we have my cooking utensils. We have the Emberlet Stove. This is the full size version out of titanium. We've used this a bunch of freaking time. Have the bear bowl by bare minimum. And I love this thing because it unfolds kind of like one of those Chinese takeout to go boxes. But it puts me in a situation where I can boil water, cook food, and even if I actually do this carefully and wrap it with some tin foil on the outside, I could put this in direct flame and use this as a grill if need be. Then moving forward, I have some caffeine gum. Then in here, 
We've got, it's just, I did it for bright to conceal it and kind of protect them a little bit because they are so fragile, but these are the active carbonate filters for my Hydro Blue Sidekick. Then we have my pocket wick. I can use this for fire starting if I want to. I can use this as cordage. Then we have my Field Master from Victoria Knox. I love this freaking multi-tool. This multi-tool will do a bunch of freaking stuff for you. Then we have my sprongs. This is for camp cooking, man. This is so when I actually catch a fish and we have some good times, I can turn these spoon and fork and do a sprong set right here. And this thing is freaking awesome. But it, with my like mountain house meals and all the stuff I have in my pack, the neck on here is long enough. I can reach in and uh, get my hand all messy. Then in the final big, huge vinyl pocket, we've got my shmog. I mean, you can, I mean, come on, you can use your smoke for everything. You can use it for a towel, face rack, head cover, anything you can think of. Then for a redundancy, if I lose my shelter or my shelter breaks, I need a backup, I have the hex tarp. Like I said, my situation is gonna degrade pretty substantially because being in a hammock is much more comfortable being in something like this. And then resting under all of it all are my rain stick F2Os. I want ways to be able to keep my energy up and keep myself moving. So I can dunk these down in the mid afternoon after I get my shelter set up and I kind of rest for the night. I can go and pick these up about four hours later and I have a two to 300 calorie energy to drink to keep my electrolytes up, keep my salts and my sugars, everything going. I'm living in a very arid, hot climate, being able to keep your electrolytes going, being, keep yourself hydrated is more important overall, in my personal opinion, than food. Now we move on to the first Cordura nylon pouch. So this is my Hulk's Brook Owl Mike. This is my 16 inch hatchet. And then I've got my Silky Big Boy 2000. This thing is a 14.1 inch saw. And realistically, in Texas, for most trees, this will help me fell some trees for a more permanent shelter. I have two replacement blades already built in that literally take up no space whatsoever. But it keeps me in a situation that as long as the handle and the actual mechanism doesn't break and it's just the blade, I can just interchange the blade and keep working and maintain my tools in the field. And then last but not least, I have three of these D4 figure four deadfall traps. These came courtesy of BattleBox. We actually got these in a battle box and we only got one, but I reached out to them and they sent me a couple more and they're far more efficient to set up. All I gotta do is set them up, put the bait on the end of the stick and let it rip and go to town. Then last but not least, we go down to the bottom Cordura nylon pouch. Now, this are some desert cord and some jungle cord from Tribe One Outdoors. They offer the pack tack technology, but traditionally you can use these to strap things down and they will do things if you need to strap things under your pack. Things will stretch out to over like 12 feet without actually having to worry about tangling up your cord. And these things are super, super, super durable and super, super, super strong. And like I said, I kind of opted out of paracord. This is a 125 feet of 100 pound test line utility cord. I know a lot of people would just like, I'll just bring a 100 foot hank of paracord and I'm good. And if it works for you, dude, it works, man. And it's not a bad thing, I would do that too. Now, as a backup hunting implement, for you guys who know I have my recurve bow, we will be showing that as a takedown recurve bow. I have a backup hunting tool, something that my kids can use, my wife can use, or let's say my bow breaks and I need to kick out smaller game. Maybe an arrow is gonna be overkill for something I'll be hunting. We have the Torque by Simple Shot Shooting Sport. For you guys who follow Zachary Fowler's channel, you've seen this. This is a really, really nice, thin, lightweight option. And then additionally, to one side, I have some 200 rounds of steel ball ammunition. Last but not least is my bow, and I kind of teased you guys with the quiver, but this is my bow. This is actually the Phantom 56 inch bow by the Mandarin Duck. You can find these guys on Amazon. And the, the reason I picked this bow is it's actually very, very budget friendly. There are plenty of freaking traditional hunters out there that keep it very, very simple. They don't add any gizmos or gadgets, but for me, things just work a little bit better with a system that's very, very similar to a compound bow, which is what I grew up shooting. Now, this is a quick detach quiver that can connect it just very similarly to a compound bow that will connect right to the side. And we're gonna be providing some overlay footage to that. Now the limbs we're running right on this particular system are 45 pound limbs. 45 pound limbs, you can go up to 50, 55 if you want to, but 45 pound limbs for most game that's in Texas will be more than adequate from a tree stand or a tree blind, just fine. You don't need to worry about that. But something I was very impressed with with the particular Phantom bow, it was very, very quick to actually set up and once I got the sights and everything on there and I started taking aim, it took me like 20 to 30 minutes to really hone this in, even on a very, very windy day. And at 15 yards, we were able to sight this in and get some pretty good groups towards the end of the day in a very, very short amount of time. But that just about does the overview for what's in my $5,000 bug out bag. We know that a lot of you guys will be running different systems, different packs, different needs, different environments, different budgets. It doesn't really matter what you're running. And the big takeaway from this particular video is I hope we gave you guys some ideas on particular systems. And if the only thing you got from this is you check out something like the cookware or the trauma kit or the tripwire systems, and that's one little system that you found useful that you can run 
do your thing, we did our job. And that's the most important thing. And for any of you crazy people who stuck around to the end of the video, the winner of yesterday's Amazon gift card giveaway is Dark Forests. Congratulations, Dark Forests. You're the winner. So to the back of our channel, so we use contact details. But that does it about it for now. But if you enjoyed the full overview of what's in my bug out bag, give this video a big thumbs up and share this out with your friends and family in your social media networks so we can keep growing, thriving, and making awesome videos for you guys. But that does it about it for now. Hope you guys have an absolute wonderful day. I'm out.